Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. We're so lucky today to be joined by the fantastic Taylor Hickson to talk all about motherland Fort Salem. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the research that you originally did when you got this role, because it sounds like you did such a deep dive into Wiccan culture, because obviously for your character, this isn't something that is just part of who she is, but it's part of her entire family lineage and was really interested if that's something where you've continued to dive deeper as you've gotten further into the show and learned more aspects and, you know, or if there were other spaces where you continue to research as you continue to develop her as a character. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Wiccan culture, I've always sort of been tied into the more grounded everyday practices. I found it, very, I find it very meditative and, um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in, in, saging and um energy and crystals and, and all that sort of thing <laughs> but i i'm in a new house at the moment and uh, i'm gonna buy some sage from the indigenous community center soon so that i can sort of freshen up the space but yeah just little things like that just taking time with the self and and tapping into my energy and my femininity and um and what that means for myself but um in terms of just you know character building i'm hugely into psychology uh, you know, I, I watched murder mystery, forensic files, all that stuff growing up. So uh, I was always taking notes there. I just I, I, I find it really interesting um, what makes people tick, essentially. So acting was a great career choice for me. It's another sort of understudy of psychology in a strange subcategorized way. But um, I, I really took to sort of you know, the first place I kind of start is like journaling and trying to understand where I'm going to and from uh, in each scene and also uh, what, you know, whatever moment we're seeing in, in their lifespan or their character arc, um, where I'm coming from and going to. And then as well as I like to give them like an Enneagram number and I like to take sort of personality tests and give them maybe like a birth chart uh, in astrology. And that's kind of how I've got into astrology which is also really closely tied with with Wiccan culture and um you know I'll give them like a Harry Potter house <laughs> and all that sort of thing um but it's it's really interesting because I haven't had the opportunity to really delve into further create uh character development in a season two because I've only been so lucky to have one season of each show that I've done and this is my third show so carrying on the legacy of Rael has been really interesting. And we, we definitely grow in parallels. We learn a lot from each other. She's taught, a lot, taught, taught me a lot about compassion and, um, you know, things that I don't necessarily connect with. Um, you have to find a way to, to justify because we, we might not, you know, put in the same situation. We might have very different emotional responses. And um, so trying to justify what's on the page as to what I personally feel, I, I think created a space for me to, to really open up to new relationships and perspectives and uh, see things a little bit more object objectively and, and have more acceptance and be more forgiving with others instead of always seeing everything so black and white, which I think before my career path in acting was, it was, I was very much that way. And so it's, um, it really, it, it created a lot of expansion for me morally, I'd say, and um, yeah, and just having patience with other people and myself. Yeah, and you were talking before about the journaling that you did for Rael, but that's always been part of your character development process from the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, but I know that Deb Podowski, who is an acting coach that's, that was working with you and the rest of the cast actually encouraged all of you to do it. And so I was very interested in whether there were other things that she encouraged you and the rest of the cast to do as part of that character development work together that were, were kind of new tactics for you. And if she's also continuing to work with you on the show, how that evolution has really helped in working in tandem with her. Yes, I mean, we, it was so fleeting to see her in season two, but she was always there over the phone or for Zoom calls for us. But we were so limited as to who we could have on set during the pandemic. So unfortunately, we didn't get to see as much of her this year, but I'm hoping that will change drastically for a season three. Um, but season one and the pilot, uh, the pilot we had uh, Steve, who was our director producer, and he, him and um, Deb, they really, it really created a safe space for us to come in and just really bear our most vulnerable selves. And that was kind of how we really got to know each other and 
you know, we cried and laughed with each other and we, we we did these really interesting exercises to sort of like get energy bouncing back and forth and to take us to like our maximum of you know breaking point or um feeling elated or feeling desperately sad and then we dial it all the way down and you know so laying all of those vulnerable facets out of yourself in front of other people it's just especially when you're spending 18 hours a day with these people it's it allows to to create bonds really quickly and i think we were just so lucky to organically mesh well and um be there for each other because walking onto a set full of women is very intimidating and it's not an experience i can say that i was acquainted with before so it's it was a little scary and i think naturally as women we're made to feel threatened by each other it's set up by media and and um and just really archaic mindset you know um we're really pushed to sort of resent each other or feel threatened or put each other down or to step on one another to get to something because we're all fighting for the same thing and that's just for like our rights and our growth and our voice and job opportunity and and money and you know it's it it never ends and so it was really interesting to to have all these minds who share a common goal come together and and sort of have that open conversation that you know we're here we we have each other we're not we're not here to step on each other and this won't go anywhere unless we drive the vehicle forward together so um yeah we really really pushed the message of unity across it was something that the network really wanted to see and we were so lucky to have organically and I love the way that you're describing a lot of the work that you all did off screen to discover that vulnerability, because one of the things that's really beautiful and enjoyable to watch in your performance is the way that you play with that within her as a character. Because obviously at the beginning of the first season, Raelle very much came in a little overconfident with a lot of walls up, like I know everything, I don't need anybody else. And then when we look at the trajectory that you've taken on her, it's monumental to this point where she's really allowed people in, she's allowed people to see sides of her that maybe she didn't even know of herself as well. So it's also been a very internal journey as well as external relationships. So I just wanted to ask a little bit about the way in which you've always sought to explore that and where you've thought about, okay, I feel like now she would be ready to reveal this about herself or show this side of herself mm -hmm. to someone as the show has progressed. There was so much, uh, there's so much truth that we share. And I, I'm a terrible liar. I keep saying this. I'm a Sagittarius. So it's, it's not in me to lie. I just, I can't do it. So, you know, people always ask me, well, if you can't lie, how are you an actor? And I'm just like, that's the thing. There's just so much honesty in what I do. And that's why I find it so therapeutic and um, transformational for myself. And to speak to what I was saying earlier about learning from one another. And, you know, she's really opened up my channel of empathy and understanding other people to create relationships beyond the dynamics I originally would have. And um, being able to work with her has taught me a lot. Hers and Rael has taught me a lot about forgiveness and you know patience with myself, and that it's okay to take two steps forward and steps back. And and there's always that push and pull because that's that's what makes her human. That's what makes her relatable. You know, she she finally learns to trust, and then it's taken from her, and she has to find her footing. And that's that's what happens. I think everybody on this planet can relate to setbacks and hardships and, and having to push forward because you know when you're put in, in that position you have you have you have two options you can give up or get strong you know so it's she she made the choice to, to keep pushing because when we when we met her we um you know she had she had completely given up she was ready to go full kamikaze and she she let Scylla know that and you could see it in, in the way she behaved and interacted with other people in her community and instead of trying to find likenesses in them she just challenged them because she didn't trust anyone she she lost the only woman that ever understood her and protected her and she felt really alone and you know she didn't really feel like she felt, felt um she didn't really feel like she fell in with with civilization you know with civilians she she didn't really feel like she fell in with witches because either side looked at her sort of like muddled you're a, you're a mix of the two you're not pure either way so civilians were afraid of her or thought of her strange and and which is thought of her as you know you're not pure and so it was something 
that I think she's only sort of coming to terms with is finding a sense of community and finding a sense of belonging and purpose. And it's interestingly in season two, after her, her new gift that she's discovered with Abigail, um, her, her objective is really changing, you know, some, something that she thought really challenged her morality from inside and out being older in the army. She now feels a sense of, protection over them as it's her biggest asset. And it's sort of the only people that kind of have, have given her value or, or made her feel like she has a sense of purpose. And um, there was a book I was reading and I had this talk with my brother and, you know, he, he wasn't doing well for a while. And he was just like, well, I don't feel like I'm needed. Like, I don't, I don't want to go to school. Like it doesn't matter what I do because it's not going to have an effect on people. And I think something that really shifted um, in, in his mindset was just when I was like, just by breathing and being alive that you know you have purpose. And it's just as simple as that, as a contribution. And you start there. And as soon as that, that realization is something that's part of your everyday practice, you do things like you get up and you brush your teeth and you get up and you do the dishes. And when you, you know, give someone praise and say, you know, good job. I, I needed that. I needed you. And just in little small things, it, it refuels a belief in yourself to sort of push forward. And I find that that was something that was really parallel to Rail's journey. And so it was some, something interesting that I was going through with my brother, <laughs> not even as a, a case study, but it was just like, it was something that I really introduced into, into Rail. And because my brother's that age, he's 18 and, and I'm 23 and it doesn't seem like a long distance, but a lot happens in, in those pivotal years. And it was something that, I, uh, I brought into the development of the beginning of season two. Yeah. And it's interesting that even though she is a character that very much will say a lot of things that she's thinking, that there's also a lot of much quieter internal moments in the show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of them were the moments that she was with Scylla, some of them were moments by herself, or even moments such as when she's, you know, using her power and floating and there's just a transcendence that she's able to step away into. And I was interested in how you approach a lot of those scenes differently because one of the challenges as an actor is how do you explore such complex internal journeys in an external way and figure out what the expression of that's going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think something that I personally tie it to, um, I was just talking about this book early this morning. Um, it's called Big Magic. It's by Elizabeth Gilbert. And uh, it's something that Jessica, who plays Tally, recommended to me. And it's one of my favorite books. I gift it to everybody. I think anyone who has any sort of artistic expression should read it. And um, one of the main concepts by the title Big Magic is just that sort of profound feeling when when something clicks and and something just pours out of you and it's they're fleeting, fleeting moments. They don't happen often, but they're just so profound and magical and they, they grab every part of you that defines who you are. And it's just sort of comes out in, you know, in your writing or your acting or your music and so I I sort of channeled that like the few the few fleeting moments when I've woken up at 3 a.m. and I'd be like, I've got it. I have, I have a song and it's like, it's every, it, every part of me has this innate need to write this down and get this out. And this is, this is exactly where I'm meant to be creating this. It's like, I think it's sort of that, that just sort of like inner faith and belief in, in the connection, that intuition to something bigger than you are and the, the gravity of, of that gift. And, you know, it's sort of something outside like it's an out-of-body experience speaking to you and, and guiding you and yeah I sort of I sort of channel to that and it's very fleeting rare moments but they're also defining moments one of the other set of scenes that I wanted to ask about are the moments when you're doing a lot of uh, of the vocalizations because there's such a consistent thing throughout the show and every single time that it happens, it's such an ensemble effort and it tells so much story about all of the characters as a whole, but also individual trajectories as well. So we get to see moments of where Rael's connecting to everybody else, what her relationship dynamic is in those scenes, mm -hmm. and then also just individual inflections. Um, and so we're just very interested about the journey and process when you when you're all filming a lot of those moments so we actually brought in a vocal coach uh frederick roberts for for that he's fantastic um and funny enough most of us actually had some sort of singing background or natural capability 
everyone's just so talented on the show. Everyone has so many different <laughs> talents. And um, when we got to introduce uh, a little bit of music for Rael <laughs> coming episode six, um, which, which was really fun to incorporate. And, you know, I, 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 we did a lot of work with uh, Elliot Lawrence and Frederick uh, and we went to the studio and that was really scary to, to have to sit down and record, but um, it all sort of started back in the pilot and um, just the exploration between, you know, the sound studio and the network and Frederick and our natural capabilities and we all kind of found tones that we felt represented us and sort of vowel shapes and, and attaching emotion to it. And it wasn't so much, I guess, how it looked or how it sounded as long as that commitment and the emotional presence was there. And so we really, really played with that and the connection between acting and, and music and, and the conjoinment of art. It was really interesting to, to play with for sure. And it's definitely something I now have on my resume. <laughs> And when when you filmed some of the scenes where she's able to heal someone's physical pain, but takes on some of it, do you find yourself just thinking purely about Raelle's experience with that? Or are you also looking at the other actor's performance and how they're inhabiting that pain to think about how she would then be taking it on and what she would be experiencing? Yeah, I mean, acting is all about listening to the, the person that you're with, because that's what you do when you have a conversation. You know, you, you listen and so you respond um appropriately you know and so it's like to really i think to really motivate a good scene performance you just have to be really present connected with that person no matter if you've known each other for a day or for five or 50 years you know it's just it's all about listening and so <laughs> my friend sarah who uh who played liva in season one uh, she always made a joke saying acting is reacting but there is so much truth to that and um yeah so it's it, i think it's all about playing with that and and you know people like it when they're listened to and when they're mirrored so i i think i play a lot with that and watching people's um uh body movement and, and the way that they're feeling and what they're telling me that they're nervous and i think it's you know when you're paying attention to that instead of trying to remember the next line that's in your head it's a lot more interesting to watch you know you see what's going on in here and what your eyes naturally do and i think that's so much more interesting than watching someone else wait for their turn to speak and that's not to say that there aren't <laughs> conversations i've had in my real life where that is the case but i think yeah, it's so much just about listening physically and mentally um, and verbally you know and as well as the emotional, there's so many physical aspects to this role for you as well. And and during the first season, I know that you went through a lot of extensive training and in particular, even learning rope darting, which is not a not a massively utilized skill set and, and skin that most people have. Um, but was there any specific training that you continued to go do going into this season? Because obviously, as she gets further into training and has certain experiences, as a character, she's picking up certain skill sets that then you have to be able to reflect that in the physicality of the role as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we try to stay up to date and um, keep practicing and, and head into training um, as much as we could. It was a lot trickier as we all had to find a space and we were all spread out and we could do it safely and socially distanced and with masks on and exercising with a mask on is like incredibly difficult. But um, it also, I think, helped get us into shape a little bit more, helped push that cardio button a little bit. Um, but, you know, they, they really, uh, production really takes care of us and, and exercise is such an important part of keeping your brain healthy. And um, it can be easy to sort of slip up when you can sort of eat anything you want on set and, <laughs> and you're working such long hours that it's like, it's hard to motivate yourself to to get out and exercise. And so, you know, they would help uh, give us the opportunity to have a place to go regularly exercise and take care of ourselves. And that's that very much contributes to the physicality of the role. You know, we are we are in the army and we do continue training physically. So um, keeping ourselves in shape was a, a really important part of keeping us, you know, strong and keeping us going. Um, it really helps the spirits. And then as well, uh, we, we got to do, we, we played around with stunts a lot uh, in season one. We got to do a lot of our own stunts, but this uh, this season 
it's a lot more emotionally driven. It's still very action packed and there's a lot of life and death <laughs> danger, but um, we definitely, we definitely tapped into more of the emotional concept and uh, it was r rather more so than the physical. There's still lots of stunts, but I think that's what made made it for such a such so much more of a darker undertone this season for sure. And when you were shooting episode, sorry, season one, um, you talked about how six to 10 were the episodes that really just pushed you, you know, not just in a physical sense, but in an emotional sense into completely different spaces with Rael as a character. And so what were those aspects in which it really pushed you as a performer? And have you found that with this season that there, there's been a similar trajectory with certain episodes where it's really asking new and different things from you as an actor? The trajectory is very comparable to, to season one. I'd say six, five or six and on is very intense. And uh, for my character, Rael, that was, I'd say, the most challenging arc uh, of development in the season, making of season two. So <laughs> there's a lot of really interesting similarities. I'd say seven was incredibly, incredibly tough. And there's definitely a a thematic pattern going on there. So I'll just say to watch for that and see if you can spot the similarities. Um, but I, yeah, it preparing, you can't really prepare for it. It's, you just have to be there and, you know, take it as it is. And we were only getting one episode at a time with our scripts. And, um, but I'd say those, those challenges are my favorite part about what I do because those are where I make my discoveries. And those are the places where we, we bond the most, you know, Ash and Jess and I, before a really difficult scene, we'll all kind of hold hands and just sit with each other for a moment and just sort of sit in the energy and ground ourselves. And uh, it's great when we have a bunch of us in the room because we'll all do it together. And it, it's, some, it's, a, it's a practice we sort of adopted that I think really helps just click into that mindset. And the more time we spend together and the more time we spend creating, it's always easier to tap into that. And I think we're able to push our boundary further and further as we learn more and more about each other because we're seeing we're seeing each other grumpy we're seeing each other tired and hungry but we also see like the most pure forms of elation and laughter and and growth with each other you know we've we've been through so much together on and off screen and i think it's something that's really carried into into the scripts yeah. And you were talking earlier about how this is the first opportunity that you've had to go into a second season with a character. And how has that been a completely different experience for you? And what are some of the different things that you feel that you've learned through, you know, taking a character that you've already developed and then thinking about furthering that journey in a different way? Yeah, that's that's been really wild. I mean, um, just in in blatant differences between season one and season two season two we shot during a pandemic so it took us twice as long as we had to cut down the hours we were testing three times a week we weren't able to be as uh, physically intimate with each other you know we're, we're all very huggy touchy people sans demetria if you get a hug out of that one you are lucky my friend <laughs> that those are rare and she means it if she's holding you if she's touching you if she's looking at you <laughs> He's the best, um, but it's it was it was very different uh, in the sense where we we definitely got to spend more time with different characters as opposed to season one, um, and different characters took on different storylines that sort of drive the vehicle to meet in the middle, and um, I I was so honored to get more time with Lynn Renee who plays General Alder, she's just. I I can't even put it into words. She's taught me so much um, about who I am and and what it means to be in the position that I am, and you know to dance in every spare second you have, and and create as much as possible, and cry and laugh and and love with your whole being. And I think she really she's just she really encapsulates that. So that's that was something that I think I really worked on was my relationship with her and um we have some new characters coming in so that was really interesting because it's yeah like I've never had a season two so to, to spend that much time in in another mindset was an honor and I think um you know in in, in films and, and other tv shows you only see like a facet 
just like little fleeting moments of of one person's trajectory overall trajectory and and their lifetime so to spend this much time with a person she's definitely an extension of myself um <laughs> we disagree on a lot but we also agree on the most important things i'd say and um yeah she's very close to me very close to my heart and uh i hope i just get to spend more time creating and growing with her in the season three I hope so too. I'm really looking forward to everything that you've continued to pull into her as a character with all of these layers and complexities throughout the rest of this season. And thank you so much, Taylor. Thank you so much, Laura. I really appreciate your time.